Tuesday, September 11th, 2001. This day will forever ring an ear-piercing bell for everyone all over the country. It doesn't just affect the people of New York. This day touched and affects everyone in America and made us all victims. All of the effects touch people even outside of our country. September 11th changed lives permanently. 9-11 was the day that changed the United States of America. September 11th started out as a clear Tuesday morning in New York City. This day was disturbed when American Airlines commercial aircraft crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. The plane was filled with over 19,000 gallons of fuel, so the impact left a fire-filled hole centered at the 80th floor of the building. It instantly killed hundreds of people, and it trapped everyone on the above floors. Many people saw the attacks, or the remainder of the building, and began to be disturbed and moved by the incident. Many news broadcast stations came and began to cover the images. ...into flames and black smoke. We are going to join one of, another one of our New York affiliates, WABC, for their live coverage. ...plane overhead, and then all of a sudden I, I thought it sounded kind of lo um, louder, but I looked up, and all of a sudden it smashed right dead into the center of the World Trade Center. Many people believe that this was some type of accident. Then, less than 20 minutes after the first plane crash, a second plane crashed into the second tower of the World Trade Center. This plane hit at the center of the 60th floor of the building. Many people in the region saw this crash occur in the live news broadcast. And there's more oh, there's, explosions oh, right there's, now. There's, hold on, people are running. Wait, hold, so, hold on. on just a moment. We've got an explosion inside. The that building's was... exploding right now. you got people running up the street. Okay. Oh, at this on. moment, everyone had the same mindset. The United States was under attack. As the eyes of millions of people all around America watched the events happening in New York, another American airliner circled over Washington, D.C. and slammed into the side of the Pentagon military headquarters. Jet fuel from the aircraft caused a destructive fire that led to the collapse of a section of the concrete building. Later, it was found out that a fourth plane had crashed into a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. I had an interview in Tribeca, and I lived in New Jersey, and I took the train in, and I got off of Penn Station, it was a nice day, it was real sunny, and I started walking downtown, and I was walking to Tribeca, and I was like uh, four or five blocks when the first plane hit, and nobody knew what was going on, and it was like real crazy, and then the, uh, the second one came later, and that's when, uh, like, it just, it got crazy, but yeah, I was, I was down there. And then I ended up having to walk across the George Washington Bridge. Public transit was shut down, I couldn't get home, and I stayed at a friend's house in Jersey City. So I remember it was about second grade, and uh, we were uh, just doing, you know, doing work and things like that. I think I was in my French class, and we, the news came on in about, like, in New York, that you know uh, the first plane hit, and I remember that. So everybody started panicking. So late, everybody started to call mothers and family and things like that, for who, so the ch children can be picked up. And it was just so devastating. And then when I seen it, when I got like a little bit older, I didn't really understand it when I was younger. So I was like, okay. And then I got, I, I fully understood it, and it was a very devastating time. And I really, really have a heartfelt for those people. After four plane crashes within the same time frame. People all over America began to see that this was no coincidence. There were people out there who were trying to attack the freedom of Americans. After the attacks, investigators and militants looked into the attacks and they discovered that the group of people responsible for the American tragedy was Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda is a global military Islamic group founded by Osama bin Laden in 1988. It contains a multinational army whose motives are based on the Muslim motive called Global Jihad. 
Jihad is the war against non-believers. The United States is just one of the countries that have been targeted. We are targets of their civilian and military attacks. We had three principal issues. One was to remove the U.S. military presence from Saudi Arabia. The other was to end the U.S. support of Israel, uh, particularly as it affected negatively the Palestinians. And three was, at that time, an immediate halt to the bombing of Iraq, and even still now today, uh, an end to sanctions that he felt um, adversely affected Iraqi women and children and, and, and innocents. After the 1991 Gulf War, the U.S. kept approximately 5,000 troops stationed in Saudi Arabia. One of the responsibilities of that force was Operation Southern Watch. This operation enforced the no-fly zones over southern Iraq. They also protected the country's oil exports through the shipping lanes of the Persian Gulf. Osama bin Laden responded by banning the permanent presence of infidels in Arabia. In 1996, Bin Laden called for the American troops to get out of Saudi Arabia. This was called a fatwa. Bin Laden said that he felt that Americans were too near Mecca, and he saw this as a disgrace to the entire Muslim world. Due to its subordination to the Jews, the arrogance of the United States regime has reached the point that they occupied Arabia, the holiest place of the Muslims, who are more than a billion people in the world today. In the 1998 fatwa, al-Qaeda identified the Iraq sanctions as a reason to kill Americans. It is not permissible for any non-Muslim to stay in Arabia. Therefore, even though American civilians are not targeted in our plan, they must leave. We do not guarantee their safety. Muslims have been against the Jews for a long time in world history. It has been traced back to ancient times. Osama bin Laden believes that the expansion of Israel is a sin and even a crime. He believes that anyone who is involved in the expansion of Israel should be killed and destroyed as a group. Americans have played a role in this, so America is a target. Millions of people were affected by the September 11th terrorist attacks. These effects include, but aren't limited to, physical and mental health problems. This large amount of people had different exposures after the collapse of the World Trade Center, and health effects have varied as a result. More than a decade of studies suggest that thousands of people, including rescue, recovery, and cleanup workers, and people who lived, worked, or went to school in Lower Manhattan on 9-11, have developed chronic, mental, and physical health conditions. People exposed to the World Trade Center collapsed dust were more likely to develop respiratory symptoms, sinus problems, asthma, or lung problems. So what was in the air? Well, pretty much everything that had been in two 100-story buildings, but vaporized. Some harmful gases came from the computers that were in the towers. The gases were released in the fire, smoke, and collapse of the towers. There were a lot of light bulbs, computers, and other machines in the towers as well. Asbestos-laden dust, when inhaled, draws a response from protective macrophage cells, which attempt to ingest the particles and remove them. The asbestos fibers are too long to remove. They become stuck in place and ultimately form tumors around them. They found that 11% suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, which normally is present in approximately 3% of the population. In addition, 9% were clinically depressed, 5% suffered panic disorders, 
and 62% had substantial stress reactions. My name is Vito Valenti. Um, I was diagnosed with pulmonary fibrosis. I haven't been able to sleep in a bed for four and a half years. I sleep in a recliner, um, just, you know, sleeping up like this because um, I can't lay down breathing. My name is Christopher Bauman. I was a New York City police officer hired in 1992. I was assigned to 6-7 precinct uh, for two years and then transferred to Manhattan Traffic Task Force in Manhattan. I, I attempted suicide. Uh, well, I was blind. I was covered too with that gray, powdery soot and dust and powder. 9-11's an up-and-coming thing and so on. How many years it's taken for these diseases to incubate in, in, in my body and God almost have many other people's bodies. And it's just, the, the world's got to know that there's probably hundreds of other cops, firemen or whatever, that are going to come, God forbid, they're going to come have these problems. Um, we're, in a sense, probably will be grappling with the results for years to come. The most famous and unfortunate effect of the attacks on America was, of course, the cost of the lives. On September 11th, more than 3,000 people were killed during the attacks in New York City and Washington, D.C., including more than 400 police officers and firefighters. Many funerals and memorial services were held in result of these deaths. It was a sad aftermath for America. People lost friends, loved ones, and significant people in their lives. America had to start over. Tuesday, 9.47 a.m. Hi, baby. I'm, baby, you have to listen to me carefully. I'm on a plane that's been hijacked. I'm on the plane. I'm calling from the plane. I want to tell you I love you. Please tell my children that I love them very much. And I'm so sorry, babe. Um, I don't know what to say. There's three guys that had that complaint. I'm trying to be calm. We're turned around, and I've heard that there's planes that have been flown into the World Trade Center. I hope to be able to see your face again, baby. I love you. Bye. Some people were fortunate and survived the horrific attacks of 9 11. This man, Michael Hickson was one of them. We were on the 78th floor of the North Tower, or Tower 1. So that was the first tower hit. It was struck on the 96th floor, approximately, and on the other side of the building from us. So nobody knew what had happened. Michael and his colleagues led 20 or more people down more than 70 flights of stairs to freedom. Remarkable to most about his story, is that Michael has been blind all his life. He says he's no hero. For a blind person to escape on 9-11, as long as we know what we're doing and as long as we use our wits, it's just as likely that we should be able to do that as anyone else. Michael worked in the Trade Center for six years with a data backup company, giving him and his guide dog, Roselle, a lot of time to learn the ins and outs of the building. Michael says his dog, Roselle, was the real hero. Roselle was a hero in every sense of the word. She kept her cool, she did her job. She saved me and I think saved so many other people just by her actions. Michael says a lot of lessons come from 9-11. There are so many things that, that people forget. You don't need to have eyesight to do everything in the world. Michael realized that there were some positives from 9-11. The 9-11 attacks brought positives to America as well. For one, it brought a sense of heightened awareness Many policies have been created to make the United States safer. The security of aircraft and air zones are specifically raised to an all-time high. Search protection is now guaranteed to everyone, whether you are a suspected terrorist or not, by the U.S. Constitution. Border patrol was also intensified. 9-11 also revealed severe problems in communication, culture, and protocols. It improved our emergency systems. 9-11 also struck an idea of nationalism to America. The attacks were a reality check and made America see that we need to support each other. This rise of nationalism was to reflect on what happened and to see this as a way to improve our country. It made us see how strong we really are. George W. Bush expresses this through his post-9-11 speech. Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, 
our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes or in their offices, secretaries, businessmen and women, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. The pictures of airplanes flying into buildings, fires burning, huge, huge structures collapsing, have filled us with disbelief, terrible sadness, and a quiet, unyielding anger. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat. But they have failed. Our country is strong. A great people has been moved to defend a great nation. Terrorist attacks can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. These acts shatter steel, but they cannot dent the steel of American resolve. America was targeted for attack because we're the brightest beacon for freedom and opportunity in the world, and no one will keep that light from shining.